Hello everyone, my name is Eleni Rogers and in this video we'll be focusing on the ArcGIS Utility Network. We'll be covering some of the fundamental capabilities of the Utility Network, followed by a real-life UK example of viewing, editing and analysing a clean and wastewater network. We'll then finish by taking a quick look at how the Utility Network fits into the wider ArcGIS platform. So what exactly is the Utility Network? It is in fact a major update to the core ESRI capabilities for managing both utility and telecom network data in the ArcGIS platform. Designed to work with ArcGIS Pro and ArcGIS Enterprise, it features key functionality that has been developed alongside leading industry standards based on the requirements of the utility and telecom industry today and for the next 15 or more years. The first key component that makes up the utility network is network modelling. Being able to better represent in a GIS how a network operates and behaves in the real world, such as how assets are connected and dependent of each other and how resources such as gas, water, electricity flow through a network. This is really the foundation for ArcGIS utility network, which is entirely configurable to your own utilities needs. As the utility network is designed to understand how real world assets are connected, another core component is the ability to ask critical operational questions, such as how many customers are provided access to my utilities resource and individual assets? How can planned or unplanned works be safely and effectively isolated? And which assets need to be operated by an engineer in the event of an incident, such as a burst pipe or a fault? The last fundamental component of the ArcGIS utility network is that it is services based. That is, it's scalable to be viewed and analysed by anyone, anywhere, and it's been integrated with the wider ArcGIS platform. This means that the real world view of your utilities network can be shared and distributed to anyone who needs it via web applications. And crucially, as soon as an update is fed through from one part of the system, everyone is able to see those updates in near real time. So in order to demonstrate these capabilities, much of this video is going to focus on some of those real life use cases for the utility network. We will first consider best practice asset management when it comes to editing an existing network. Here, I'll be de demonstrating how Utility Network can support data quality workflows at the point of entry, ensuring the integrity of the flow of the network is maintained. We'll then focus on some key drivers for utilities adopting the Utility Network, the first being customer experience. Here, I'm going to demonstrate an example of an unplanned incident on a water network, and using the modelling and analytical capabilities to quickly find out what I need to do as a utility to isolate that incident and report which of my customers will be impacted. The second driver for utility network is around health and safety whilst operating work orders within a wastewater network. Again, I'll be utilising Utility Network's analytical capabilities to configure an out-of-the-box tool for assessing whether there might be upstream flushing or jetting work orders that would cause a health and safety concern for anyone working downstream for that time period. So let's now take our first look at Utility Network in ArcGIS Pro. I've already brought in my clean water utility data into ArcGIS Pro that's running against Utility Network. I've also been able to visualise my utility network with Ordnance Survey's master map data provided by Esri UK's content team. My map contains all of the devices, assemblies and pipes that make up my clean water network. And as you would expect, I can interact with all of the components within my network for example, by clicking on a pipe asset, I'm able to quickly understand the information captured behind that feature, such as the material, the diameter and the pipe length. But Utility Network also enables me to understand how this asset fits into my subnetworks, which in the case of the water utility might be district metered areas as an example. 
ArcGIS Pro also comes packed with many editing and analytical tools that I can use directly with my clean water data. But I also have a whole new ribbon dedicated for utility network for validating connectivity and for performing sophisticated analysis, such as tracing. But the first thing that I want to do is consider best practice asset management when it comes to digitizing a new service connection to a residential property. And I can use the editing tools available in ArcGIS Pro to do just that. By selecting Create, I have access to a number of templates that come with the utility network, and I can search for a specific template that I'm interested in, in this case, a service connection. But the utility network is also designed to help you speed up that digitizing process whilst keeping the connectivity of the network maintained. You can therefore create your own templates based on your editing needs that populate attributes, for example. In the case of a new residential service line, this needs to connect to a fitting on the main. I then need to create a residential valve and the service connection point at the end of that service line within the property boundary. That's three assets that I need to create, but actually I can do that with a single template within the utility network. I already have one of these templates set up, which I can search for to start creating those assets. I can click on the template and I want to digitize a new residential connection to this property over the road. And you may notice when I start to commit those edits that the template within Utility Network has enabled me to automatically create the valve offset approximately one meter from the junction from the main. I have the service residential line and I also have the service connection point at the end of that line within the property boundary. So I was able to really quickly digitize that new residential connection within a single template. But in the background of that task, Utility Network was also listening to a number of rules that automatically populated some key information about my residential pipe. By clicking on my new pipe, I can quickly see some of that information that has been populated, such as the pipe length, a new asset ID, as well as the fact that it's been automatically timestamped on when that feature was created in the database. So that as a utility, you can look through the historical edits across your network. What I'm then able to do with utility network is check that that edit can still support the connectivity of the network. And I can do this by clicking validate, which runs through those checks and those rules to ensure the integrity of my network model has been maintained. The next driver of the utility network that I want to explore is the analytical tracing capabilities that would help me as a utility to answer operational questions. In this scenario, I first want to use the out of the box tracing tools to understand which valves I need to switch off in order to isolate a main burst in a water utility. I can use the utility network ribbon in order to start this tracing process. Here I can add a starting trace location, which will be along a residential water main. I can use these tracing tools, which I've pre-configured here, to tell me which valves I need to switch off in order to isolate that incident. In the case of an electric utility, this might be understanding how to trace the likely cause of a fault that has been reported by a customer. Utility Network is able to look through how water is directed around my network and identify the valves that need attention by an engineer. The result has selected those particular valves on the map. But there might be a valve that we know to be inoperable as it's been paved over, for example. And in this case, I know that this particular valve has in fact been paved over. So we need to rerun that trace and find the next operable valves 
that the engineer needs to attend to. By simply selecting that valve as another trace location, the tool recognizes that as a skippable uh, location. And once the tool has finished running, you'll see that actually now we have a completely different set of results where the impact of that inoperable valve has meant I need my engineer to switch four valve locations off in order to successfully isolate the incident. Using the configurable capabilities of Utility Network, I also want a tracing tool that's specific to my utility's needs that extends further than what Utility Network comes with out of the box. In order to maintain great customer service within my utility, I also need to understand what residential or commercial customers will be impacted by this incident and report this to my wider organisation, such as a customer operations team. I've actually pre-configured this tool using the utility network tool sets and I've added this to my tool set so that my user can quickly access that tool. They also do not need to worry about configuring that tool. They can simply hit run with the starting locations that they have. Once that particular tool has run and we zoom in, you can see that the uh, affected service connections or the residential or commercial properties have been highlighted. I can also see this within my selection view in ArcGIS Pro, open up my attribute table and start to identify who each one of those customers are and pass this information back to my custom operations team to alert those customers or to check if any vulnerable customers might have been impacted as well. Now let's consider a completely different water utility, in this case a wastewater utility. I want a slightly different tracing tool here that would enable me to trace upstream in order to find work orders that might cause a health and safety concern for an engineer working downstream of those work orders. In this scenario, an engineer needs to enter a sewer main but cannot safely do so until a check has been made to ensure that jetting or flushing activities are not happening upstream of their location. Again, I can use Utility Network to answer this specific question that might be unique to my specific utility. In this case, I have my starting location in the green dot and my working orders upstream of here in the red dots. I can use my upstream tracing tool and once I run this trace, I'm able to quickly identify what is upstream of that working location and what work order I might need to pay attention to in the case of jetting or flushing. So we've seen a number of examples there of how utility network can be employed by utilities in order to assure best practice asset management, where editing rules can be employed in order to prevent bad edits or to speed up the digitization process. We also then just saw the tracing capabilities where we might want to understand how customers are impacted by a particular incident or to identify any health and safety risks along a network in the case of jetting or flushing in a wastewater utility. The next part of the video is now going to focus on how the utility network fits into the wider ArcGIS platform. In this particular example, I've been able to share my utility network data to my wider organization through a simple web application. I was able to do this by leveraging the ArcGIS platform sharing and collaboration capabilities. And in this example, I've created a simple dashboard that enables perhaps a manager or senior levels of a utility to see at a glance how a network is changing. It's a simple web app that I can access via a secure web browser. But in the case of the water utility, I can use this to look at the number of service connections that I have across my network. 
or even use it to track how many new service connections have been made in the last 30 days, helping me to track assets and how the network is changing over time. And because the utility network is accessible directly within my web browser as a service, whenever anyone makes edits, whether that's in desktop or across any other application, everyone sees those edits in near real time. I could also use the same data, but shared in a slightly different way. In this example, I can use uh, the dashboarding capabilities to interrogate my data. So I might want to understand, well, what is the relative age of my pipe uh, assets within my water utility? And where are those assets indicating potentially a greater risk uh, for breakage or unexpected unplanned incidents? And when I've selected uh, that particular set of assets, I can also filter down and understand the types of material behind those assets. And this is just another example of how your data can be brought into a web application, but tailored for a specific user. So we've been able to cover a lot of the core functionality that comes packed with the utility network, and there is a lot more to show. But fundamentally, it is an entirely new framework for managing utility and telecom data sets in a GIS system. This framework has been achieved by the utility network data model that's been developed alongside leading industry standards to model real world representations of very complex networks. And it's these high end modeling capabilities that are allowing organizations to create digital twins of their network assets to understand how resources such as gas, electricity and water flow through the connected assets and across an entire network. Utilities are now also able to ensure data quality at the point of entry with rapid digitization tools and constraint rules. Answers to mission critical questions are at the touch of a button, such as how an engineer needs to isolate an incident. Beyond this, access to your utility network is possible to anyone anywhere, whether that's on a desktop or via the web. If changes are made in one view, it's instantly available to everyone within seconds. But most importantly, the utility network is completely flexible and allows you to configure your own business rules. The ArcGIS Utility Network provides the foundation for you as a utility to then configure your smart networks suited to your own needs. There is a lot more that we weren't able to show in this video. So if you are a utility and are interested in finding out more, please use these resources as a starting point. ESRI UK are happy to answer any questions that you might need, so please do not hesitate to get in touch.